Hello, everyone. Welcome to the J3U podcast. I am your host, John Jewett, and with me, co-host, Luke Miller. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Excited. Cool. Uh, today, and being that is Thanksgiving is about to be upon us, we're talking Thanksgiving. All the good Southern cooking <laughs> food. Yeah, the, the meal that maybe we all look forward to. Um, I have because I've done, <laughs> with moving Olympia around, like, I missed a lot of the holidays last year. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have Thanksgiving, so it's kind of fun just to, just to have it. But that can, we'll get around our topic for the day. <laughs> so, what, uh, yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you manage it? Do you manage it at all? Do you just go literally, no pun intended, ham on Thanksgiving <laughs> or turkey? <laughs> but so, um, what uh, what at least do you have planned for for Thanksgiving this year? um we're pretty laid back so friendsgiving will be kind of like the whole group we have here in dallas okay kind of like combo friendsgiving just kind of gathering type of a thing and then emily's mom is like a southern mississippi woman who just wants to cook and so there'll be like a full family spread on actual thanksgiving because that woman just doesn't stop when it comes to the holidays so she, she cooks it all herself does emily cook too she helps, but she doesn't do most of the cooking. And Linda does all of it, and it's just unreal. And you know how it is, like, deep South parents, just, like, emotional, <sighs> like, everything is about the food associated with the event. And so um, banana pudding is my thing. When it comes banana to pudding. Food. Yeah, she makes a banana pudding called crack pudding is what they call it. <laughs> it's just, like, I don't even want the Thanksgiving food. I just want a serving of the banana pudding, and I'm good. <laughs> I just think of like just, just a thing of pudding. Like straight, there's there's got to be more to it, right? Is it like yeah, it's like vanilla, bread wafers, kind of... vanilla wafers and a couple other things. Okay. But it's, have you never had classic banana pudding? I guess not. No, that that wasn't a thing in our our house. Like, man. So she she made a a kiddie pool tub of it for a church event once, and the whole <laughs> tub was gone before the rest of the food. Wow. I, maybe I'm missing out, I guess. Cause I think of like, like Jello, make your no. pudding up. Like, no. oh, I'm thinking low level. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like legit as shit. So you just drive to Dallas. You'll come join our oh, things. Okay. You'll learn. Yeah, my, I've, I've always had like a traditional meal Thanksgiving with my family, and but my mom over the years, like as she's gotten older, it's like convenience. Like, how can we get the same food? as conveniently as possible without sacrificing too much like taste so uh like at least in texas we have bill miller which bill miller barbecue they'll cater a lot of thanksgiving um so we'll get like our turkey from them the stuffing from them which i know this sounds super lame it's like bill miller is like fast food barbecue in texas um which makes it sound really shitty it's a, it's a it is a better version it's pretty good but um and i will say that they're no no you know mom it's okay it is pretty okay i like my mom listens to the podcast <laughs> but it's uh it, it's decent right yeah but over the years it's kind of le- like lost its allure because it's just this this bought purchase kind of meal and my aunt yeah. would bring over she'd make like a squash casserole thing but um i would always like love the stuffing that was my thing like cornbread stuffing i loved I was never huge on turkey. Um, a lot, we would usually get ham also, and I really liked ham. But uh, yeah, it just, uh, the actual foods just w- weren't like overwhelming because I didn't have that like home cook, like what you're going to get, man, you know? So <laughs> it's like Southern, like a uh, stick of butter and everything that's that's on the table. Yeah. So, but this year it's different because I have Thanksgiving. Last year I was on prep. So we're actually going to go to um port st lucie florida that's where my aunt and uncle live i haven't seen them in like oh gosh it's probably been 10 years i'll, I'll be like a completely different human to them uh and um i haven't seen any of my cousins either this is like my r- very close family like the closest that i have in relation like first cousins it's my dad's sister i don't have a lot of other family that's that's that close that i see normally um so we're gonna have like a traditional thanksgiving with them and they're, they're like hardcore Italian, like 
it, my uncle's parents are were straight from Italy. So he's, uh, I, I don't know what that means for Thanksgiving, but they like to cook. But now they're like 80 years old. So I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but all my cousins were like, my, my cousin ran like this huge food truck operation. My other cousins run like, uh, like this big pizza businesses. So they're all been like food people. So I'm, I have big expectations, but don't worry. Like Renee and I will cook the shit out of stuff if we need to. Um, so at least that's, that's our plans. Go to Florida and have like a real Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. I think as we kind of start to venture into the, the topic, one of the biggest things like you kind of pull out and this is, this is Thanksgiving for me more than anything, like the food is whatever, but uh, it, it should be prioritized around the quality time with the people around you. Like, I think that's probably like statement number one is like everything that we talk about should be built around you being capable of experiencing the time with your family. Cause like me growing up, like it was just my mom and I, so it wasn't Thanksgiving itself wasn't a, a big thing, but Christmas in our house is fucking like, the, the event of the year so black friday is like the day that we all go out as a family and we all go shopping and do like the christmas gift stuff so like thanksgiving is like the gathering of people and then we go and gotcha. so that's kind of like how like the holidays for thanksgiving has always kind of been for for me yeah i think uh i would say like at least in bodybuilding and being so you kind of get disconnected and you're isolated especially in prep, like coming out, I really want more, more social events, not to be around food, just to be around people and have those connections again, start, especially getting older. You like, and your family's getting older. Like I want to like, I can't wait to see my aunt and uncle and just visit with them. So I don't almost want it to be where we're all cooking all day and we don't get to really spend the time. But if it's like this group effort to prepare the meal and we're all like sharing in that process together, that's just fun. It's just a fun experience. And so that's what it's all about, you know, being, being thankful for the people that you have around. Um, yeah, there's like foods that we plan out, but I don't think that's where we should put the, the priority, um, you know, planning out like you're planning out like your cheat meal or binge meal, which I think it's, it's very quickly easy to get into like disordered eating around Thanksgiving and also really worrying about your, how your physique goals kind of carry into that to where you have people that are trying to really manage their eating the entire day around one meal because they're worried about what's the other side of Thanksgiving going to look like for them. So I think structuring this day uh, is, is important to not try to drive it into this, what it's easy to go in bodybuilding, right? Eating disorders and, and body image disorders, um, yes. which uh, it's a tough one to kind of navigate. I think for many, cause I, there's, I think if you find yourself restricting food in any way around the meal, prior to the meal, um, that is kind of just de definitive of what would be technically like eating disorder. If you feel anxiety around that, um, if you can, yeah. if you can manage those things and I, like, I will adjust food slightly, just more so based off of, of hunger for the day. I think an important aspect, like, it's for one that you do have some sort of plan, which we do like always do. Right. Um, yeah. Like, Hey, we don't need it. Don't skip breakfast. That's um, an idea. Like skipping meals. Don't, don't do that. Cause one thing you're going to drive up hunger higher and we do tend to eat more and food even tastes even better when you're hungry. And I think that could drive further like large volume food, food eating at that, that sitting. So, you know, don't skip meals on Thanksgiving, still have your normal breakfast and that you, that you, that you would. Any you change start yeah, of the day? I, I, I just, I kind of go into it with like a slight reduction throughout like most of my meals throughout the day, just like small reduction in carbohydrates and fats in each meal, just cause like the meal will probably be a little bit more calorically dense. Um, I do like a one, this is just what makes me happy. So this let's like clarify, like yeah, I, I don't like it to be like a, an eating fest. I'll do like a, a one plate thing, like a one plate, not a rule, but one plate type of a suggestion. I'll eat whatever I want on that plate and then just kind of go about the rest of my, my day. Still have my meals slightly reduced. I like having the smaller meals around it just so that, you know, 
I'm having some meals that are kind of unusual to my stomach. I don't overly feel that great hungry afterwards. And so like, especially the meals afterwards, I'll even like, depending on hunger, kind of like you do, like I might even just do protein veggies after that if it's like the hunger signal is really low yeah I, I after that like you kind of eat off which is that's why i think it's important even in off season you kind of worked on understanding like your normal cues of eating rather than eating for like what is weighed out you know that you can actually you know uh you know integrate like hey i'm full versus i'm hungry like a scale of one to ten like ten being i if i ate another bite i'd puke why don't we stay around like a seven for the day and, and like one being like, I'm completely starving. I could eat anything. Uh, I could eat hay out of the barn. Uh, like, you know, don't let yourself go past like this, maybe this, this scale that we could use of like a, a set seven, eight. But I think having some type of some guidelines to eating would, would be helpful. Like uh, if it is like a one plate um, and then even selecting foods, you don't need to pile them sky high because that's your only plate that you get. Um, also, you know, if, if you have some idea, like I, I even like what I'll do usually is pick a small amount of each and every food. Cause I want to try lots of things. That's kind of how I like to eat. And then things I try where I'm like, eh, I'm not huge on, I won't eat it. And, and then I'll eat the other stuff that I really did enjoy. And I might go for a second plate, but it'll only be the items that I, I really did enjoy, but I still will eat to like a point of like, okay, I'm satisfied. Um, and and also it's more so while I'm eating, I, I am focusing on the conversations around me and not trying to revolve them around food. And I hate revolving them around, oh, this is on your, on your diet plan, John. That's usually what always comes up. How's this is on your, this is on your food plan day. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, I try to re, you know, change the, change the topic a little bit. Cause I don't, just don't want to, I don't, I don't want to feel food. They don't even know they're food shaming me, but they're kind of food shaming me <laughs> at Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest things is like, and I, I kind of, I'm the opposite of you. Like, I know going in what I'm, what I want, like, the, I, I could care less about the variety. So like, that's just what I put on, put on my plate. And I just have that. And, and I'm typically good. Um, and I think that, again, this always comes back to staying in the present, enjoying the opportunity to connect. And like, if you do that, honestly, you'll find that you don't overeat and like binge because like, it slows your eating rate down. You're kind of taking breaks and enjoying the conversation and you'll find yourself not shoveling food where you're just like constantly eating. And I think that when we look at like the amount of structure that you have going into the day, it should be built around your confidence level and skill level and comfortability with how you feel and are able to connect the greatest at. Like for some people, like I've seen just having what they want to eat during the day written down but still enjoy the meal with no structure to the actual Thanksgiving meal helps them be able to disconnect because they know they just follow the paper and they go and no matter what, that's just what they're going to do. And that's fine. They enjoy the untracked meal and they kind of move on with their day. And if that releases the anxiety of having to like decision make on the day, then that's what you need to do in order to focus on the time with family, in my opinion. Yeah. Literally on the plan is untracked meal. So it's like, yeah, exactly. you're not failing yeah. by eating whatever you want at that time. It's literally on the plan of this is your time to eat. And I, I think it is okay to overeat a little bit. It, it's a Thanksgiving meal. Enjoy it. Like if you're going to, if you get full, yeah. it's okay. Um, and you can accept like, Hey, weight might go up the next day. Like you might look a little bit more watery. Like it's okay. Um, in the big confines of like weeks and weeks of dieting and perfect days and meals, et cetera, yeah, you just have to accept that within the day that this isn't going to backtrack you. Um, I try to look at it also as like this, uh, this eating window where you get to eat like more anabolic food, right. Or however you want to think of it. Um, I think that gets into training too, um, about managing output because a lot of people might get too restrictive with food so they, they can eat more which I think is problematic. Um, well, I guess I should, before I even say like eating the next day, um, I, you know, I don't think you should e even restrict the next day necessarily, but maybe so still off of, of your of hunger signaling, you know, if, if you're like, man, I still feel like really bloated and, and uncomfortable. Well, yeah, eat a little bit less with your, your meals, but I, ideally 
it would just getting back to your normal plan and not trying to compensate for any type of um, at calorie excess the next day. Um, so that's, that's not what you want because that could lead to less, less productive training too. Yeah. But, Cause I just, I, I'm a big fan of like moving back to the plan. Cause I think that yeah. post it's giving meal time is where the anxiety drives the highest. It's like the, Oh shit. Like, yeah, what have I done? I still feel good. Like damage control, like type of thought process. And, um, like just kind of like, like after I got sick, right. Like the best thing that I could do was get back on plan, execute and just let time pass to where I'm like back in an even better spot now than when I left for San Antonio, it's like the same concept, like just get back you'll re-regulate, just give it a few days and you'll be back rolling and rocking. Yeah. Otherwise you, you could eventually like dig yourself into a hole, right? Like food's down, then maybe performance gets down or, you know, and then it's, yeah, they re and you swing the pendulum the other way. It's like, no, just, just get back on your normal plan. You're perfectly fine. Um, same with regard in training, in my opinion, uh, I, depending on the schedule, I usually like to train, on Thanksgiving, it, it just, it just depends. Like every Thanksgiving kind of been different, right? I enjoy training. And so on like Thanksgiving day, usually it's like, it's like there's no client check-ins. I can go to the gym and just, it's like, no one's in there and it's fun. Right. Um, but at the same time, depending on what it's like this year, uh, I don't want to take that time away from spending it with, with family. And so if I, if I have time to train, sure, I'll, I'll go do it. Maybe I'll go to go early. It's going to be like a, you know, a fun session for me. Um, but in, in no way am I thinking I'm trying to make up and put out more energy output so I can eat more food. Um, and it's also not like, oh man, I'm going to like drive more anabolism with this large meal. You're like, no, <laughs> no, it's uh, if I train, it's because I enjoy training and I can, I can fit in for the day. Uh, I'm not going to do more cardio either. Uh, Cause I still have like my main goals in mind and not trying to like, smash my legs for how it might impact training for, for that day. So um, do you typically train on Thanksgiving or is it off day? My favorite activity. Minus <laughs> the banana bread. Um, uh, so like, I, I'm just, I absolutely, so my birthday is really close to Thanksgiving. And so like my two favorite things are to train on Thanksgiving and train on my birthday. And so like, I'll move my split where I make sure that I train on Thanksgiving and train <laughs> on my birthday. Because I enjoy it like so much. Is it always moved to like leg day on Thanksgiving or? Uh, I don't know. I don't always know. I just kind of want to go and enjoy it. Like it's not just like a smash fest like okay. leg day. I, I prefer that for my birthday. That's that's where because that's celebratory for me. I got you. I, I will say that like I keep up, I just keep up my normal step, like step count, like walking after the meal is super helpful a lot of people if you do overeat then you like immediately like lay down on the couch and you like take naps like i don't like to do that right away i like to eat and then move and then it just seems to help with digestion and just i just like to feel good like he was even telling renee after we've had some like larger like untracked meals just feel shitty and it, it just sucks like it's okay in the moment but the next day you just feel like crap and i'd say i, I don't like feeling like that so that's always in my mind, but it does seem like just moving more during that day. Uh, I just enjoy it and the food digests better and I, I feel better. So that's something to just, just keep up my normal like activity level, but I'm, I'm not kidding on the Stairmaster for anything. <laughs> I don't care how much pumpkin pie there is. I'm not getting on that Stairmaster. <laughs> yeah. I always feel for the bodybuilders whose families do like the the football game, the family football game. Oh, okay. I just see this 250 pound bodybuilder waddle running for footballs, like down the, down the yard. But, um, I think, I think like doing that, like making an active activity around like time, like everybody going to group walk or do play a game that's active or something like that really creates the activity you want. Plus the value of more time. Yeah. That, that's fun, man. If you can like try to integrate some type of like new family tradition of activity to go down like my I, my family's so old like my parents are 70 my you know aunt and uncle they're like 80 i don't know what we're going to be if we played football like i would smash them <laughs> no but i i can't <laughs> run for shit so i don't know maybe that's a, 
but we'll be by the beach. So like, you know, get out to the beach might be cool. Um, yeah, beach one. But uh, yeah, even like the next day, like I know a lot of people are like, oh, can, can I do some extra cardio that next morning? Again, it's the same thought process. It's just get back on your normal plan. If you normally do cardio in the mornings, go do your normal cardio in the mornings. Um, if maybe that's supposed to be an off day for cardio, if, if you want to move your cardio for the week on, on that day, I think that would be fine because you're still hitting your weekly goal. But to do more on top of your existing plan is what we don't want. And I know listening to this, you're probably thinking like, all right, give us like the hacks to where we can eat more Thanksgiving food and like not have it impact us. And really like the, the hacks that a lot of people do perturbate like body image and eating disorders it's what we don't want to put out there it's more so like what we're trying to put out is like regulate your own eating and don't go out to excess now to to excessive extremes to account for it now say you were it did turn into some binge fest right and you ate and ate and ate <laughs> still don't go and restrict because it's still creating that same that same process and thought process of binge restrict it's just get back to your normal plan. That's the best thing that, that you can do. And then I, I would assess back and say, like, when you had those meals and you had that emotional response from eating that meal and you took those action steps to continue to eat, think on that and have like some self, self-awareness of what you felt during that experience and what action steps could you have taken differently when you felt those emotions. It would have, would have been maybe something something other activity that you could have done or maybe what, what was driving that. But I think it's, it's something deeper to go into if you're continuing with you know, this binge eat, binge restrict type pattern. There's usually deeper psychological aspects to dive into with that, but it's just, it's a tough one. We always talk about in bodybuilding, how it's, it, it's really hard to navigate those waters. Um, and at least in the coaching, we wanna be a do no harm or mitigate risk in certain areas at least, but at least for like eating, um, I definitely want to be doing no harm with someone's psychological aspect of giving them poor food relationships. So I, I, I try to keep the, the amount of rigidity we need to, to progress with structure, but at the same time, allow flexibility to not perturbate like eating issues with foods and have good food relationships. So um, that's, that's what, at least what we're both trying to promote here and trying to find that balance, which it's, it's hard to strike. It really is. Yeah. I think one thing too, just like those of you who coach as well and are coaching other people, or even if you coach yourself, like maybe like if like assuming all season setting, you don't take like food progressions the week of Thanksgiving either. Like coming into the week, you don't push the base plan up because you know the Thanksgiving meal will push up the weekly average. Right. And that's kind of like another thing that a lot of people I'll see will do better with is like just kind of let the meal create the surplus for the week and then reassess with the following check-in. And then if the base plan push is needed, make that base plan push. Yeah, I think that's reasonable view. And I, I've implemented that with clients as far as like mac, stealing macros, if you want to say, like a, a certain percentage you could pull off from a meal or even from some days to where your weekly average hits, the, it still hits the targets. But on that other side of the coin, you're not pulling off so much that you're impacting like the day to day. Yeah. So I wouldn't be adjusting the day to day plan. I'm just saying like, if you're getting to that point where you need to take your next food progression, yeah. like maybe just hold the plan through Thanksgiving and then get to the food progression after. Right. You're not running a cutting phase every day leading to Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, fuck that. No. No. Follow your plan and Follow then your plan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For sure. I think that covers pretty much everything as far as like a strategy perspective. Yeah. I think so. I mean, um, I was trying to think of, of like anything else, like if, if you really want need to like manage hunger more like during the meal, um, it, you know, at least for like food selections, like, you know, and, and, you, and you are trying to like focus on, Hey, I don't want to overdo it here because of how I feel. I would say, you know, stick with still, you know, load up on the like turkey and stuff and the vegetable choices. I see no, no issue with that. And then take, take smaller portions of the stuff that is more calorie dense. Um, I, I don't 
see any issue doing with that and chew your meals slowly. Uh, don't try to rush and force them down um, and, uh, and, and stay, stay engaged and present. Cause I think it's the same time you want to focus on conversation, but it's also easy to just be like forking it down or, or just like when you're, you're watching like Netflix while you eat and then all of a sudden your meal's gone and you're like, what the hell did I just, eat? and you know, so at the same time you want to be present enough to like have your meal, you know, the first bites of something that's really highly palatable is usually it's like, like I think of a pie, like the first bite, it's like, oh my gosh, this is super sweet. This is amazing. Um, but then after a few bites, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, it's kind of undone with. Well, that's the point maybe where you, you notice those things, you just stop. Um, but I think you could be a little strategic if, with meal selections, food selections, and, and go with like, go pick your high protein stuff and your, and your veggies and, and have that be a, a priority around, hey, I want to make sure I get all these, these this, at least this aspect in. Then uh, you can pick some smaller portions of, your, of the calorie dense items. Um, and like you, Luke, you know stuff that you, you like and stuff for sure that you don't. Um, it's like that. Like eat, maybe I want to try everything, um, but I, maybe for like the really high calorie dense stuff, I just want a taste of it, but I'm not going to load up on it, right? Um, but I, I really think that was pretty comprehensive, everything that we did we did cover. Yeah, for sure. I think that covers it. And just like ultimately like take the time to enjoy it with your loved ones, like and, and be present and, and just manage your manage your strategy going in it to according to what allows you to do that the most yeah thanksgiving be be thankful that we just have the ability to continue to bodybuild and that is our biggest concern so many many people ha have a lot a lot worse for sure and uh, we're very blessed in, in the fact of what we do so to all of y'all thank you for tuning in i wish everyone a happy thanksgiving um Love you guys for being able to listen to us, chat away, and, and educate y'all, and we will continue to do so. <laughs> so anyway, till next time, we'll talk to y'all later.